Hello everyone, welcome to the Geo Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on various topics of geography, environment and several other topics on my channel, the Geo Ecologist. So if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing our channel and for the earlier publications, you can go to the playlist and see according to your convenience. Now, in today's session, we are going to introduce the world regional geography and various concepts related to it. So how the world could be studied from geographical perspective by dividing it into various regions, various realms and the concepts related to it is what we are going to discuss in today's session. But before we go ahead, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and do also share the videos with others as well. So now let's discuss about the world regional geography and its introduction. But before we go ahead, the first thing that we should always learn is the geographical perspective. What is this geographical perspective and how it helps us to understand the world through regional concept. Remember the concept of aerial differentiation. That's very important and key ingredient of this study. So to understand geographical perspective, very important thing to learn here is that most of the times if you study geography, what kind of study are you doing? Interdisciplinary study, right? So geography is not a single discipline, but a combination of world knowledge of disciplines, right? And this is testimonial to geography's historic linkages to many other subjects. Which subjects? For example, if you observe geology, economics, sociology, environmental science and several others. So what you observe is that most other disciplines focus on one key theme, such as economics is about money, goods and services, exchanges, political science is about power, then psychology is about mind, biology is about life forms. So what is geography all about? If you want to learn, look at this particular map. Isn't it self-explanatory itself? What does it say? It says top 10 rice producing countries in the world and you just look into the map and you say that where is the concentration of top 10 rice producing countries in the world? This is where this spatial dimension of geography helps us to look at the world in different viewpoints. That is geographical perspective through maps. So if you observe geography is about explanation of a space on earth surface and geographers are specialized and concerned with the organization of this terrestrial space. Earth as a home of humankind, right? So if you observe that geography or regional geography, if you say, is a multidisciplinary subject and it has different viewpoints, different perspectives, which combine in to help us understand how we can divide the world into regions and understand. So for example, from biology, we get biogeography connections, marine science, marine or oceanography connections, geology and geomorphology are interconnected, meteorology and climatology are interconnected, urban planning and urban studies and urban geography are interconnected, historical geography and history is interconnected, economic geography and economics is interconnected and likewise many others. So this tells us the broad realm of understanding of the subject geography. Now using this geographical perspective, it's important to understand this space spatial viewpoint. Whenever we say spatial analysis, locational analysis, regional analysis, the word is space which is centered, right? So it's all about organization of terrestrial space and mostly social space factors such as cities, buildings, politics, boundaries or natural space like climate, terrain, topography, vegetation, so many things. This is where the spatial viewpoint comes to. So if you observe in this particular map, what do you observe here? This is simply showing us the nighttime image, the collection of night skies and how which portions of the world are emitting most of the light. So what does it say? It says the levels of development, isn't it? It says many stories in a single map that where are the most of the people living in the world, where maximum number of people live, where is the more concentration, where is more development and several questions you can find answers in a single map. Isn't it? That's why we say maps are the tools that help us analyze the world in a given spatial perspective and gives us answers to various queries. So what you observe, geographers consider this particular tool not only because it is just interesting to look at, but also it has a lot of answers related to how we live, how we organize our societies. So this is a world viewpoint now, right? So if you observe, geography employs a 
कॉम्प्रिहेंसिव स्पेशियल वोकैबुलरी नाउ वेन आई से जोग्राफिकल वोकैबुलरी वॉट आर द वोकैबुलरी एरिया डिस्टेंस डायरेक्शन क्लस्टरिंग प्रोक्सिमिटी एक्सेसिबिलिटी ऑल्टीट्यूड लैटिट्यूड लॉन्गिट्यूड सेवरल की वर्ड्स यू आइडेंटिफाई इन जोग्राफी इज इंट इट एंड वाई डू वी आइडेंटिफाई दिस की वर्ड्स कॉल्ड जोग्राफिकल बिकॉज दे हैव अ स्पेसिफिक मीनिंग राइट सो वेन यू लुक इन टू स्पेसिफिक मीनिंग वन ऑफ द मीनिंग इज कमिंग थ्रू स्केल I'm sure you have heard the word scale so many times in geography, isn't it? So what does it mean? Does it only talk about the map with a scale? So if you look here, effect of scale, what is it? It's like a zoom out and zoom in factor, zoom factor as you can say. Do you zoom into images when you click images? So what do you do? You change the scale, isn't it? So if you zoom out, the details are lesser, but the area coverage is more. And if you zoom in, what happens? Details are more, but area coverage is lesser. So in this way, if you observe here, this North America map, and then you zoom into Canada and look at the scale change here. So what does it say about geographical perspective of the world? That if you want to look into the regional analysis of the world, you need to zoom into a level where specific regions could be located with spatiality. That is their dimensions of uniquenesses, right? So if you observe, importance of scale concept is not confined to the maps. It's about perspectives. It's about thinking spatially, geographically, right? So fundamental role of scale in geographical research is in the ways we think, right, about geographic problems. So scale in terms of levels of analysis is what we use. So many times we say operational scale. At what scale are we talking about in terms of a phenomena? If I say monsoon, what scale it is? If I say cyclone, what scale it is? If I say landslide, what scale it is? Tsunami, what scale it is? So any phenomena in geography is related to the levels of operational analysis that we want to and also what special level we want to analyze. So if you observe, world can be divided into geographic realms that we say, right? And to understand this, what is important? That world is globalized, it's highly interconnected and international trade, travel, migration, tourism, movement, all these things keep happening. And this leads the world into the networked world, isn't it? And when we say the world is networked, there is a creation of the concept called global village in today's world and with neighborhoods, isn't it? So this is where we are talking about the interconnected networks in terms of the world map. So if you observe, what do you observe in this particular map? The world is interconnected, but still divided in terms of its spatial uniquenesses. So if you observe, we call such neighborhoods as geographic realms. And these realms have their own unique characteristics. Each realm has a uniqueness. Every realm that you see in the map has a uniqueness. So look at all these 12 realms here, right? So what you observe? North America, Middle America, South America, Europe, Russia, Central Asia, South Africa and Southwest Asia. Then you have Sub-Saharan Africa, South Asia, East Asia, Southeast Asia, Austral realm and Pacific realm. In all together, 12 realms or 12 global villages or you can say 12 neighborhoods and they are interconnected, right? There is a transmission of goods, services, exchange of material, exchange of energy through oceans, through atmosphere. So physically and human both ways they are interconnected, isn't it? So what is important here? Each realm processes a particular combination of these environmental factors, cultural factors and organizational properties. So now let's understand that if you want to study the world into these 12 realms, what is the criteria behind it? How do we divide the world? So to understand this, the criteria has to be understood and criteria is basically based on combination of factors. Of course, it's a complex world. You cannot have one criteria and delimit the boundaries, right? So you have multiple factors. So what is the multiple criteria? Look into it. The world is complex. So we have the intricate linkages of different forms of processes around us. And then what we observe is that it depends on circumstances. So the first idea is physical and human criteria. So when we say physical human criteria, one is natural, one is anthropogenic or social criteria, isn't it? And what we can see here is this particular image. So if you observe, this is the physical criteria. You can see a valley, you can see a network of river, branched river, a mountain, a slope and so many things. And here is the cultural factor. What you observe is a city as a space, this road and these buildings. So it talks a lot about the feature, the characteristics. That's why we say the interconnections is very important. Then what we know is functional criteria to divide the world into separate regions. What is the word itself? Function. For example, 
farms, mines, fishing, transport, dams, bridges, villages and other functions that define a particular realm. Then what we observe that in somewhere Antarctica does not meet this criteria of functionality. Why? Because there is no functionality that is related to human being. Then what you observe is historical evolution criteria that places evolve with time. So when we have places evolution with time, so it means what? That India which is right now almost the center of Indian ocean realm, you'll observe is heart of a cluster of things that is happening. Same as China. So right from businesses to society to cultures to economy to the climate, all those things are interlinked. Then if you observe most of Africa, constitutes of geographical realm from the southern margin of Sahara that is what we say is desert region to Cape of Good Hope and it is interconnected with Indian and Atlantic both oceans very unique landscape then if you observe geographic realms are basically defined in terms of their products of evolution so we can say these realms are not just only on single criteria but these many criterias so if you have these many criterias how can we classify these realms into two broad categories so what are the two broad categories look into it the first broad category is monocentric realms so if you divide the world into different realms on these criteria somewhere you'll find that only one region is dominated by a particular characteristic right so these are dominated by single major political entities that's why they are mono means single realms right for example north america by united states middle america by mexico east asia by china south asia by india russia central asia and austral realm by australia so these are dominated regions by political powers, administrative powers, and that's how they're known in their identity, right? And then we have the polycentric realms. It's the word itself telling you that multiple combination is happening here. So multiple influences, not a single country owns the entire area in terms of domination, rather than many are collectively coming into this. So you'll find Europe, North Africa and Southwest Asia, Sub-Saharan Africa, Pacific realm. So combination factors, isn't it? Now let's look into this through various maps. So look into this realm map of the world. What does it say? This is simply dividing the world into 12 administrative regions or you can say where one major country dominates or a combination of country dominates. So this is a world map into 12 realms that we observe here. But if we change the criteria, what is here now? Look, world climates. Now it again shows us that it is again the aerial differentiation on the basis of climate. This is how regionally climate varies. So you see these color codes from Koppen's classification and I'm sure you have already gone to the climatology playlist and looked into it. So this is important physical criteria. Then if you want to overlap it with other criteria which is human criteria. What is it? Population distribution of the world realms. Look where is the concentration? Maximum concentration areas of population in the world. So you'll find where is the heavy characteristic, isn't it? This is clearly the geographical perspective, the spatial analysis of population, right? Then let's overlap another factor here, which is a cultural factor, and it is language family, linguistic families of the world. And look here, which countries speak which language dominantly? This is clearly represented. So Hindi speaking, Northern India here, then you have Chinese, and then you have Russian, English. So all these countries clearly showing that they have different cultural realms as well in the same then let's overlap it with another that is religions of the world so if you see world religions and their practitioners so look here Christianity Islam Hinduism Buddhism and several others and their color codes here so what do you observe by this multiple dimensions of the same world map this is what we are talking about that it is a combination criteria of several such domination of the physical as well as cultural factors isn't it then further we can also look into the economic criteria so now how the world looks like you can check for yourself that in terms of economic criteria where is the development concentration which is underdeveloped countries of the world where they fall right so this is what we say is the multi-dimensionality of a space and then looking into multiple criteria and then studying the world into several pockets regions so what we are going to do in the lectures to come remember the idea is to provide you with a better understanding of world realms world regions we'll be discussing all of these 12 world realms 
right right from north america to pacific realm in the subsequent lectures individually in the separate lectures so that each realm we can study in depth with physical criteria with human criteria also with cultural and also several other uniquenesses of those criteria so now when we have discussed various facets and aspects of world regional geography and the concept of realms and the divisions of the world in these sessions to come we'll be talking about each one of the realms that is 12 realms and 12 separate lectures to follow so stay tuned stay safe keep subscribed and also don't forget to share the videos with others as well